In this lesson, Interpretation of Data will provide you with various ways that data can be presented, determine how to read the data, and how it can be interpreted, or in some cases, misinterpreted. We'll start with a simple pictograph. In this case, we simply want to determine how many t-shirts each person has. We'll look at the legend at the bottom, where a full t-shirt in the picture represents four actual t-shirts. A partial t-shirt represents two t-shirts, and a small amount of the t-shirt represents one t-shirt. We'll begin with Steve. Steve, in the pictograph, has three full t-shirts, each one representing four, so Steve has a total of 12 t-shirts. Kevin has three full t-shirts, a partial one, and then a less than partial one. So that would be 12 plus two plus one, or 15 t-shirts. William would have 12 plus one t-shirt, or 13 t-shirts, and Karen would have five times four, or 20 t-shirts. We'll show you how you can read a line graph. Notice that the vertical axis represents distance away from home, or the starting point, and the x-axis, the horizontal axis, is represented by time. Now, we'll provide a storyline for this graph and see if you can determine which section of the line graph represents its corresponding section of the story. We know at some point Amy was going uphill, she was going downhill, she was traveling at moderate speed, and she was stopping to take a rest. On this line graph, where would she be stopping to take a rest? That means time would be going by without traveling any distance further away from home. That would be represented by this portion CD is a flat line. So in other words, time is going by, but distance is not increasing. Let's think about what would happen if she was going downhill. We need to look for a very steep line where distance is increasing very quickly, but time is not. The steepest line we can find is the section from D to E. Where would she be going uphill? Where would she be traveling at the slowest speed? The section B to C, time is going by and distance is increasing at a slower rate than the other sections. That leaves us with A to B, where she is traveling at moderate speed. So by looking at a line graph, we can determine a lot about how this bike ride went. Believe it or not, these two bar graphs represent the exact same data. Look at them very carefully and see why they appear to be different. If you notice on the vertical axes for the green bar graph, it doesn't start at zero, and it goes up by 2,000 at a time, which is not a big number when you compare that we're dealing with 70,000. The red bar graph, on the other hand, starts at zero and counts by 20,000s, 10 times as much, so the difference in the bar graph does not appear as much as it does on the green bar graph. In what way would it be an advantage if you are an employer, for example, trying to show that over the last three years your employees have had significant increases, you would pick the green bar graph. If you were a union representative, you would present the red bar graph trying to indicate that the employees have not had a very great increase the last three years. This is an example of how data can be easily manipulated by simply adjusting the axes. Always be careful in the ways that data is presented. It can be manipulated very simply and it could be used to represent a very biased point of view.